Be Wealthy and Smart, episode 741. into a world of wealth and financial freedom without budgets, boredom, or bosses on Be Wealthy and Smart. And now, here's your host, Linda P. Jones. Welcome to Be Wealthy and Smart. I'm Linda P. Jones, America's Wealth Mentor, empowering women and men worldwide to financial freedom. On today's show, we're going to talk about the top 20 performing stocks for the last 20 years. Because sometimes I think people just get fixated on the FANG stocks and actually some of the FANGs are getting into a reasonable amount of difficulty. And what I mean by that is that, for example, Facebook has had major advertisers stop their advertising with Facebook. And so that is likely to affect their earnings negatively. Anytime you have major corporations boycotting or going against a corporation and saying they're not going to be using their services anymore, well, the potential is there for that to grow and snowball bigger. We also have some antitrust cases against Google and Apple. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not predicting that this is the end of the fangs. I'm just saying they're running into some difficulty And when you have the narrowing of a market where literally 25% of all the money has gone into five or six companies, it just can't continue that way. It's not a healthy market. So one of these days, the fangs are going to reach their peak. I don't know whether it's now, I don't know whether it's next year or five years from now. But what I do know is that it's not healthy for the market to be in such a narrow range. Because when everybody's jumping into the same five or six stocks, then there's nobody else to jump in and keep them going up. So we need to keep watching closely and see if there are signs of these very strong companies showing some weakness, which I think they are right now. Now, having said that, I'm gonna show you 20 companies that have been the top performing in the S&P 500. Just to prove to you that the fangs aren't the only place that you can get growth or grow your wealth. You may be surprised by some of these fast growing other companies that you didn't realize were the best performers because guess what? The top five performing stocks on the S&P 500 for the last 20 years are not any of the fangs. That's right, none of the fangs are in the top five best performing stocks for the last 20 years in the S&P 500. Before we get to that, I wanna talk a little bit about the business cycle because right up until February, the economy in the United States was doing extremely well. Things were going great and we had people employed and we had lots of areas that were really doing well. Even though we did have some fundamentals that were portending maybe there was weakness coming, such as the inverted yield curve that said, well, maybe there's a recession coming in the future. And we did have the longest recovery in history. So we were due for a recession. We were due for the business cycle to come back in. And it came back in with a vengeance, with COVID-19 and the weakness in the economy it really came in strong. Now, if you've read my book, You're Already a Wealth Heiress, Now Think and Act Like One, you'll see on page 33, I have a diagram of the business cycle. And what it shows is that there's four quadrants to the business cycle. And after a boom comes the recession. And that's really where we are right now. And why I wanna bring this up is because some people think just because the stock market has had a sharp bounce here that we're in a v-shaped recovery everything's going to be back to normal we're all good that's all behind us and we're back to the races and that unfortunately is not what is happening 
what is happening is we are in this state of fantasy land or the chasm or whatever you want to call it. I call it both. (laughs) But basically, we're in this point in time where companies have suspended their guidance. They're not telling us how much they've earned. They're sort of given a pass right now because we completely shut down the economy, not only here in the U.S., but of course, planet wide. Companies stopped giving guidance. They aren't telling us what their earnings are going to be. They aren't telling us whether things are getting back to normal or not. We're basically in a blind situation for knowing the numbers in terms of profitability, etc. So it's very difficult to come up with a fair valuation of where the stock market should be right now. Combine that with the fact that there's really nowhere else to put your money. Interest rates are almost at zero. Real estate is at an all-time high. And we really don't have a good competitive place to park your money. So a lot of people are putting their money in the stock market and trying to get some return that way. But the easy money is behind us and we do have more volatility ahead. I think this coming week, we've got some volatility. We've got more volatility at the end of July. August gets a lot more volatile. And then September, I think we might have the potential for a worse decline than we saw in March. And that may be due to this second round of COVID that we're having right now. We thought we were reopening. Now we're not reopening. A lot of states are now not going to allow intrastate travel. In some states, you have to quarantine for 14 days when you get there. So you arrive into the state in Hawaii or New York, for example, and you have to stay in your hotel room for 14 days. Then you can go out and do your business, and then get back on the plane and go back to where you flew in from. This is going to discourage a lot of people from traveling intrastate, of course. And we're not going to argue the merits of the health side of this. We're looking at the economic side of this. And from the economic point of view, it does make things a lot slower. And all I'm saying is this could be the reason for the slower economic results that we get in September we probably will start to get some of the information from the summer and things starting to pick up again and then things starting to slow down again. And that may be what leads us into the bigger decline into September. So again, I'm going to recommend that you get more tactical with your approach with your investing right now. If you're young, you can dollar cost average through this and be buying through all the dips. If you're older and closer to retirement, I think it's difficult to be a long-term investor, especially since we're just entering this recessionary period that I think is going to go on for longer than people expect. This is just part of the business cycle and business cycles do take time to work themselves through. So we're not going to be back out of this as quickly as we got into it. It's going to take us years to work through this. If you've listened to my podcast about real estate peaking, I still feel very strongly that we're seeing highs in real estate prices here. This is a much better time to be selling a home than to be buying a home, in my opinion. And that's because, too, if you look at real estate, we're at the end of a 53-year cycle in real estate. So let's talk about these stocks that have done so well. I'm not recommending that you own these stocks. I just think it's interesting to note that there are companies that have done better than the fangs because all we hear about are the fangs and we tend to think, well, there's nowhere else to get return except in the fangs. But that's not the case. As I said, the best performing stocks, the top five over the last 20 years, there's actually only two of the fangs in the top performing stocks of the last 20 years in the S&P. And we'll get to those. So let's start with number 20. The 20th best performing stock over the last 20 years in the S&P is Ross Stores. You know, the apparel retail store. It's up 4,584%. A 20-year average annual return of 21.2%. $10,000 invested in Ross Stores would have grown to $468,426 in 20 years. Number 19 
is Altria Group. That is a tobacco company. It's up 5,379% in 20 years. Number 18 is Ventus, Inc. It's a real estate investment trust of healthcare facilities. It's up 5,430% in 20 years. Number 17 is CarMax, the auto and truck dealership, up 5,441% in 20 years. Number 16 is IDEX Laboratories, a diagnostics and research company, up 5,519% in 20 years. Number 15 is NVR Inc., a residential construction company, up 5,633% in 20 years. Number 14 is WST West Pharmaceutical Services. It's a medical instruments and supply company, up 5,704%. Number 13 is FLIR Systems, F-L-I-R. It's a scientific and technical instruments company, up 5,865%. And by the way, all of those companies average 22% or better over 20 years. Number 12 is O'Reilly Automotive, Inc., a specialty retailer, up 6,581%. Number 11 is Holly Frontier Corp., oil and gas refining and marketing company, up 6,812%. And now I'll get into the top 10. The number 10 best performing stock in the S&P 500 over 20 years is Humana, symbol H-U-M, and it handles, of course, healthcare plans up 7,724%, an average annual return of 24.4%. $10,000 invested in Humana 20 years ago would have grown to $782,381. Number nine, here's our first fang, it's Amazon. Amazon, of course, internet retailer, symbol AMZN, was up 7,835% over 20 years. Number eight is Intuitive Surgical, ISRG, a medical instrument and supply company, up 8,148%. Number seven, Ansys Inc., symbol ANSS, a software application company, up 9,435%, and that is an average annual return of 25.6% for 20 years. Amazing. Number six, here we go with our second and last FANG that's in the top 20 best performers of the last 20 years in the S&P 500, and that's Apple, symbol AAPL, consumer electronics company, 20-year total return, 10,467%, or an average annual return of 26.2%. So $10,000 invested in Apple 20 years ago is now worth $1,056,000. So here's where it gets interesting, because in the top five, I've only heard of two of these companies, which just goes to show you that even though we hear constantly about the fangs, some of the best performing companies you never really hear about. At least I haven't. Number five is Tyler Technologies, symbol TYL. It's a software application company up 10,591%, averaging 26.3% for 20 years. Number four, Activision Blizzard Inc. This one I've heard of, symbol ATVI. It's an electronic gaming and multimedia company, up 16,643%, or an average annual return of 29.2%. Amazing. Number three, Old Dominion Freight Lines, a trucking company, symbol ODFL, up 18,949%, or 30% average annual return for 20 years. So $10,000 invested in Old Dominion Freight Lines would be worth $1.9 million. Number two, Tractor Supply Company, symbol TSCO, specialty retailer. It's been up 67,966% over 20 years, an average annual return of 38.6%. Check this out, $10,000 invested in tractor supply 20 years ago is equal to $6.8 million today. Wow. And finally, can you guess number one? I bet you've heard of it. I have, I've even tried it. 
It is Monster Beverage Corporation, symbol MNST. Of course, a non-alcoholic beverage company. Its 20-year total return is 98,664%. Its average annual return, 41.2%. And check this out. $10,000 invested in Monster Beverage 20 years ago? Guess how much? $9.8 $9.8 million. Wow. Well, there you go. Monster Beverage was better than Apple, better than Amazon, better than any of the fangs. Like I said, many of these I've never even heard of, which just goes to show that sometimes the fastest growing companies aren't on our radar screen, they aren't on the television screen, and you have to dig a little bit to find out who they are. Kind of shocking to me that Monster Beverage is number one. But even more shocking is that number two and three, I've never even heard of, Tractor Supply and Old Dominion Freight Lines. Nor would I have guessed that there was really any reason for those particular companies to be the best performing for 20 years. I should let you know that our data source was Y Charts, and this was from Charlie Bellello's page on Twitter. I will post this in the show notes so that you can see all the numbers that I shared with you, all the symbols and the names and the industries, and their 20-year average annual returns. Quite a chart this is. I also tweeted this on my Twitter account, at Linda P. Jones, if you want to follow me there. These are the kind of statistics I love to tweet. Am I recommending that you buy any of these? No, I'm not. We are in a situation right now where the market is very up and down, so I would be very careful trying to make long-term investment decisions right now. The market has bounced quite a lot off the lows. And frankly, what my strategy is, is to wait for a bigger pullback, such as we might see in September and October, and then maybe see if you can pick up some of your favorite stocks or ETFs at a bargain. If you haven't yet subscribed to Be Wealthy and Smart, hit the subscribe button and you'll be updated as soon as new podcasts are available. And don't forget, all of my podcasts are available on my website at lindapjones.com forward slash podcasts. They're not all on Apple because Apple only has the top 300. So we have double that over on my website at lindapjones.com forward slash podcasts. And a reminder, we still have the Summer Sizzle Contest going right now. There's 25 prizes you can win. You can win 10 of my Wealth Heiress books signed by me, and it was named one of the best wealth books of all time, and now available on audiobook format. You can also win 10 of my Wealthy Mindset Blueprint audio sets valued at $197, and five people will win wealth mentoring sessions with me. To enter, all you have to do is leave a podcast review, and you'll be entered into the drawing one time. Leave a book review on Amazon, If you've read the Wealth Heiress book, and your name will be entered into the drawing two times, and winners will be announced on August 30th. That's all for today. Until next time, live the good life and be wealthy and smart. Thank you for listening to Be Wealthy and Smart with Linda P. Jones. Share the wealth and tell your family and friends about the show. Check out our website, blog, and social media for more riches at www.bewealthyandsmart.com.